Now let's talk about the software. To be specific, the software in the post-processing procedure after you have completed your scan. So click this model. It'll take you to the model list which you has you have already created. Okay, now, but first let's scan this cog first. I just place it on the small turntable. Let's see how it goes. And let's use standard feature general. And I think I want to crank up, maximize the exposure because I didn't scan spray this cog very well. It's still kind of reflective. But Miranco's projector is powerful enough. It can capture some reflective or dark object without scan spray. But don't not to be too much dark or too reflective. Okay, keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, seems the surface of the table is kind of uh, disturbing. So let's enable this base removal on, and let's scan it. So as you can see, the turntable is actually messing things up because I'm maximizing the exposure and it's inevitable. I must scan some of the turntable part with the cog. Can we deal with that? I think we can. Let's watch and see. Okay, I think I want to go a little bit on the side to make sure I have scanned all the, the gear of the cog, no problem. So without, without holes. So let's just scan for another turn. Okay, that's about it. So as you can see, the cog itself looks good. However, there's a lot of noise in, in the perimeter of the cog, which means in general, this is not quite a good scan. But can we fix that? I think we can. So let's click model and go to the post-processing procedure. And let's first try this function, the one tap editing. And this is a quite a no brainer. Just tap it and the scanner software will do everything for you. Every step. You just wait for the final 3D model delivery. Okay, finished. So as you can see, this one tap editing is very smart. It can detect all the noise in the perimeter and deletes everything for us. But it is still not that smart that it knows to cut off the, the turntable part, which is connected directly to the cog. So now we can try to cut them off manually. There, is two, there are two selection tools right down here. One is rectangle, one is lasso. Let's try this lasso first. So as its name, you can create, you can draw a lasso and contain the unnecessary part in it and choose delete. Okay, and you can draw multiple times, not only one, see? And delete all of them. And this, rectangle. This selection tool allows you to draw a rectangular that includes everything in it and delete it. But still, as you can see that I still have difficulty in, I, I just hard for me to cut entirely just the turntable part and leave the cog, totally cog part out. So can we deal with that? Yes, we can. Let's continue. Now, let's try something different. In order to split this cog and the turntable, let's put something in the middle and something smaller than the cog so that we can get underneath or scan the side more properly to make a more complete scan. Okay, uh, same settings, standard feature and general and maximum exposure. Okay, let's scan this cog once again. Okay, now I want to get down a little bit to scan the side of the cog to make sure we leave no holes in the, in the middle. Okay, that's about right. Now, as you can see, the point cloud is much better than the previous one, right? But still there's some noise and this cup is being captured. Let's see what, uh, what we can do. Again, click OK and go to the model list to start post-processing, but this time let's use manual and I'll explain you one by one what does every function does. Okay, now let's take a look. The noise is a little bit less, however, this cup is here. Hmm. 
Okay, so first step in the post-processing is called fusion. And fusion is to make those all those point clouds and fuse them together. Now let's see, there's a two methods, fusion method, standard and advanced. So standard, it allows you to have minimum point distance, like this is 0.05. And advanced, it only allows you to do 0.1. But that doesn't mean that advanced is worse than standard. Actually, advanced is smarter than standard. It allows you to, uh, the, the itself will detect the some like somewhere the point clouds is thinner somewhere is thicker so in advanced fusion the point cloud which is thicker will get shaved a little bit so that you have a more smooth 3d model eventually and standard it will just fuse regardlessly so in this uh case we, let's use standard and note that if you put the point distance 0.05, the lower this number is, which means the more point clouds eventually you will have after fused. And of course, it, it'll takes you longer. And the more this number is, as you can see, maximum is two. It'll take much less time, but of course, your the quality will be lower than because the point cloud is less than what it has in 0.05. So in this video, let's choose a medium one. Let's use 0 0.3. Ah, 31, okay. Okay, fusing completed. As you can see, it also deletes a little bit of the noise we created for us. So now, second step. Now we need to cut off this cup part. Now, it, as, now you see the advantage of by putting the cup in between the turntable and the cog, right? So now let's cut it off. Um, actually, let's not. Let's just cut off a little bit. Let's not do it completely. Let's purposely leave something because I want to show you something else. Okay. Now, the second function under fusion is isolation. And just like the name, it can detect any isolated part which is not connected to the main object and the isolation rate 15 percent let's explain it later so now as you can see it automatically detects not only the cup but also other very small part which is isolated and we choose apply and boom it'll be gone and we'll have a very clean point clouds 3d model work right but here, let's, uh, here is uh, two arrows you can do redo and undo. Let's undo that, that step and let me show you. So this isolation rate defines how big this isolated part that you want to delete. For example, let's minimize it into one and detect. Look, it does not detect the, the cup area, right? It only detects the very small part. Uh, on the contrary, let's just max it out. Let's do 100%. As you can see, they will delete everything. So which means uh, you can use this isolation rate to control the size of the unwanted parts that you prefer to be automatically deleted. Okay, let's detect and delete this. Okay, now third is overlap detection. Overlap means, for example, what, what, you, what you have seen, I've scanned it more than one turn. So it definitely it will create, create overlap. And it'll cause somewhere the point clouds is thicker and somewhere is thinner, which could cause unsmooth of your uh, 3D, final eventual 3D model. And the overlap distance is the same. The smaller the number, it'll delete more. And the, the bigger the number, it will delete the less. But this is very hard to manually control. I would recommend to use the default, the suggested number. Okay, let's detect. As you can see, there's a lot of overlap areas and point clouds will be detected and deleted. Okay, that sounds, that looks all right. And last one, smooth, just like it means it'll smooth up your 3D model. But do keep that in mind. If you do smooth a lot, it will also delete the details on the surface, which will cause inaccurate 3D model eventually. So which means if you are scanning something with a very rich detail surface, you'd better not do, do the smooth too much. But if you are scanning a very flat surface like this table, you can do more smooth procedure. So the strength is the more this number is and the more smooth it'll eventually become. 
and times it just repeated smooth time it, it will it will do. So uh, in this case, I'll just use the default 10 and 10. Okay, you probably won't see a lot of difference, me neither, but let's see in the in the final result. So that's everything about Fusion. Let's talk about the mesh. Okay, mesh first is quality. Uh, just like what it, what it says, the quality, the higher, you will get a higher quality 3D model, but also it will take longer to process, the lower, vice versa. So let's use, uh, yeah, five looks like a, a good number. Let's just use five. Whole filling and ratio, let's talk about it soon. Let's apply it. Okay, done. As you can see, there is one, two, three, maybe three little holes in the uh, final 3D model. It looks good, right? But let's figure out how we can fill those holes, which is this. In mesh, we choose hole filling auto and we enable that. The ratio, let's put it on 30% and see what happens. So let's redo the mesh procedure. It'll tell you like, do you want to overwrite what you previously did? We click OK, so it'll be overridden. Okay, these holes are filled, but wait a second. Huh, this is not a hole, right? This is empty. The original object is empty right here, but why this is also filled, it's gotta be not right. That's because this ratio, because we put 30% as the hole filling ratio, and it will recognize, it detect and recognize everything that is about 30% of the overall size of the original object or this current 3D model will be detect and define as a whole and be filled. So how to avoid that? We can make this ratio down, the percentage down, and it will only fill the tiny holes for us. Okay, let's redo it with the 3%. Aha! Uh -huh. So now the small holes are gone and the big holes are leave opened. So this is how you can use the fill hole function while doing meshing. Okay, again, it allows you to detect the isolation once more. Oh, still some. Okay, so we can delete that and simplify. As you can see now, the verticals and polygons are a lot, right? Which means your 3D model will have a certain size. Perhaps now it's like, a 200 megabytes. So simplify is, it'll simplify your 3D model, reduce the polygons, reduce those triangles and verticals while maintaining the same quality of your current scanning. Okay, let's do that. Oh, and the ratio in the simplify is define how much you want it to be simplified, but let's not try to do that a lot or it's gonna create new problem. For example, you're losing a, an area. That, that could happen if you crank that ratio too much, or you do it a lot of times. Okay, that's simplify and smooth. Just like the smooth in the Fusion, we can also do it to make you have a more smooth surface. You can do it more than once if you feel unsatisfied, okay? Okay. And last but not least, the texture. Texture is what you do when you're scanning, doing a full color scan. And then texture is easy. I'm not gonna talk about that too much. You just click that and it'll, it'll automatically do the texture mapping for you. And it'll also be included in the one tab editing if you're doing a full color scan.